Good evening. I am delighted to be back here in northeastern North Carolina. My name is Josephus Daniels. And I was born in northeastern North Carolina, about 80 miles southwest of here in the town of Little Washington. Has it gotten real big yet? <laughs> no. I was born in 1862 during the time of the Civil War. Now, my father was a shipbuilder for the Confederacy, but he was killed during the war, so I never really got to know him. Now, my cousin, Melvin Daniels, lived in Elizabeth City for many, many years, and his father and I started the Daniels Day Family Reunion 87 years ago. I understand that it's still going on today, down in Wanchese, every August. Now, the Daniels family have been farmers, fishermen, and boat builders in this area since my ancestors landed on Roanoke Island in 1736. Now, we've done a lot of things, but in the 1920s, as a, as a young man in my 20s, I bought the, de the, the newspaper, the Raleigh News and Observer. Now, my family ran that paper for 101 years. Now, I was known as a newspaper publisher of integrity and courage. But my newspaper was sometimes known as the nuisance and disturber. <laughs> I don't know why they would think that in the newspaper. But you know what? I really didn't mind. Because I always said dullness would be the only reason an editor of a newspaper should be hung. But did you know that William Randolph Hearst tried to buy that paper from me for a million dollars? I turned it down. Now, I soon realized that newspaper publishing and politics went hand in hand. So in 1914, I supported Woodrow Wilson for president. And as a reward for him winning, he made me Secretary of the Navy, making me one of the most powerful men in the country. With the onset of World War I, or the Great War as we knew it back then, I became one of the most powerful men in the world. Now, I had been a pacifist all my life, but being a Secretary of the Navy, I sort of had to change, and with the onset of the First World War, I became a strong supporter of a large and well-funded Navy. Despite a reluctant admiralty, I also started and instituted allowing women to join the Navy and the Marines. Did you know that, that 11,000 women served in the First World War? I always thought that was progressive thinking from a guy from Northeastern North Carolina. Now, as my assistant secretary of the Navy, I, I chose a young man from Harvard educated from upstate New York by the name of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I saw greatness in young Franklin long before anybody else did. And I mentored him all the way into the White House being a strong Southern Democrat, I delivered the South to him in the 1932 presidential election. Now, one of the first things I had to teach young Franklin was to never judge a book by its cover. Now, Franklin being from a wealthy, aristocratic, upstate New York family, and I being a jovial, soft-spoken North Carolinian, he sort of underestimated me. Well, I soon showed him the way around making the Washington thing work and I soon got his respect. For the rest of our lives, I always called him Franklin, and he called me Chief. Now, as Secretary of the Navy, I made a little bit of a name for myself. I, being a non-drinker, didn't believe that sailors needed to be drinking while on board ship. So I instituted Proclamation 99, whereas no alcohol shall be served or stored on a Navy vessel. Well, to say that was unpopular would be an understatement. <laughs> um, did it anyway. But to offset the lack of hard stuff, the ship stewards started stocking extra coffee on board ship. So they'd go down and want to get something to drink, and the best they could get was a cup of coffee, and they started calling it a cup of Josephus Daniels. Or it's a cup of Joe, as we know it today. A little side story to go along with that. 
Um, the night before Proclamation 99 went into effect, there were a lot of Navy ships anchored in Veracruz. And they decided they needed to have one last party to get rid of all that disgusting alcohol on board ship. So they, some of them had theme parties, country western parties, others just brought everything up and poured it, pots on board, and just drank it. Well, there were also a number of other country ships there. There were the British, the Germans, the Spanish, all kinds of sailors from all over the world, all got together and just went from ship to ship to ship, consuming the last of the alcohol. One great big last hurrah. Literally. Because three weeks later, we entered the Great War. And all those sailors were having such a good time became combatants against each other. Well, I guess the Navy finally forgave me because in 1965, they named a battleship after me. Cool, huh? That was all a long, long time ago. And I probably could have become a governor if I'd wanted, maybe even president. But I always thought to be a kingmaker was more important than being the king. So next time you have that cup of joe, think of me. A newspaper publisher whose family ran it for 101 years. I always thought that was enough. Thank you and good night. Mm -hmm.